Hey guys, it's Matthew. Just a little quick video today. Uh, we're going to take a look at some of the plants here in the flood table to see how they're doing. And also going to replace the water in the DWC buckets because it's looking uh, a little grody in there and it's about time the water was changed out for those things. So everything has been growing really well. Everything's looking good, green, and healthy. The only exception is still the tomato plant. Um, still having the problem with the leaf curl. Even uh, the leaves are drying out a bit, the blossoms are drying out a bit, and although it's started to set some fruit, it's just not very healthy. And uh, if I had more tomato plants in there, I'm sure I'd be ripping that thing out. The pepper plants, though, are growing really well. Uh, nice and tall. They've actually outgrown the table, so. Uh, I should have actually built this thing a little bit taller than it was, but I'll probably end up just trimming down the plants a bit and uh, so they're not touching the lights. I'm going to cut off one of the leaves here on the tomato plant just so we can get a better look at what might be wrong with it. I'm pretty sure it's some kind of fungus, but uh, we'll just take a look here and see what's going on with it. So if you look at the leaves, uh, or even the blossoms, they're just uh, dried out and not really good looking. If you look at the leaf from the top, there is a few brown spots and it's dry around the edges. But then if you flip it over, there definitely looks like there's something growing on the underside of the leaf. And not every leaf has it as bad as this one, but this is a good example of what is under there. And it looks like, I mean, my guess is it's some kind of fungus. So I might end up putting some uh, fungicide on there just to see what happens if that helps the plant. Normally, I mean, it's probably not even a good idea to keep this thing in there because if I do ever want to plant other tomatoes in there, it's very possible that they can contract the same kind of disease. Now, as for the DWC stuff, it's, I mean, they're doing all right, I think, for how cold it is here but I just do not think they have the light or the heat to grow well in, in the basement here. And I did put some mylar around and it seemed to help a little bit, but still uh, they just aren't anything compared to what's in the flood table. And if we take a look inside, the roots are really too white, but they're, they're not looking that bad. And uh, I think it's about time to change out this water too because it is looking a little bad in there, especially in some of the other buckets. So I'm going to change this out, uh, use all rain water, melted snow, I guess, and uh, see how that goes. So a good question was brought up and that is how often do you change the water in your hydroponic system? Now with my system, my outdoor system last year, I can honestly say I never changed the water once in that thing. And that's pretty bad, but I was gone away from work a lot, so I was just asking my neighbors, you know, if it's low, just top it up and don't even worry about the nutrients. Um, but I think the plants were drinking enough water that enough fresh water was being topped up in there and when I would come back from work, I could kind of do the nutrient mixing when I was there. And the plants did surprisingly well for that. But that's what I did, and as far as what you should do, I think they say every couple weeks you should be changing out your water and remixing your nutrient. Uh, keep in mind that if your plants are in a really hot area, a lot of the water will evaporate, and you'll actually see your parts per million in your reservoir go up because more of the water is evaporating, but more of the chemical is there. If you're maybe in a bit of a colder area, you'll see that your water level will stay, stay the same, but your parts per million of your nutrient solution will go down because your plants are taking up more of that nutrient. And even in general, if you just see that your your reservoir is getting dirty or it's getting some maybe some sludge built up on it or it could be some bad bacteria growth that's going on in there, then yeah, you definitely want to kind of clean that up. And I think that's what's going on here in this DWC system. Uh, so I'm just going to be cleaning that up. Also keep in mind, and I think this was a mistake I was making early on too, is how big you make your reservoir. If you have really young 
uh, seedlings starting up, don't go and mix like a 20 gallon reservoir and put in all your nutrients for that because that's really a waste of nutrients and your plants aren't going to be needing that much water, especially if you're going to just end up changing it out in a couple of weeks. So keep in mind how what stage of growth your plants are and how big your reservoir is because you don't want to mix, you know, 50 milliliters of nutrients when you could only have to be mixing 10. So it's going to save you money that way too. And as the plants grow bigger, then yeah, you can increase your reservoir size and mix a little bit more because they will be drinking more at that stage. So to clean this thing out, I'm just going to be using some regular water as well as some bleach and I'll just be putting some water in here put in a bit of bleach and uh, I'll just wipe it down really good and when I'm done I will rinse it out really well and it should be ready for some new fresh water and some new nutrients So that's pretty good. The bleach is going to just clean things up really nice and kill off anything I don't want growing in there. So now I'm just going to rinse this thing out and I have two more buckets to do and I'll take care of those ones. So these buckets have been cleaned and rinsed and they just need some water and some new nutrient and they'll be good to go. So that's about it for this episode. Everything is put back together nice, new, and fresh. I hope you were able to learn something from what you've seen here today. If you guys do things differently, be sure to post it in the comments to let others know because there's definitely more than one way to skin a cat. So until next episode, I will see you then. Bye.